Welcome back to Tour Truck Tuesday. The playoffs are coming to an end. It's been exciting times. The winter season, I hate to say it, but it's approaching. So how are you gonna use that for your game of golf? What are you gonna look at when it comes to your equipment setup? How are you gonna play this off season? One of the things that I'm sure has intrigued you, it's intrigued us all, is going to the longer driver. So this is my gamer. It plays at around 45 and a quarter inch on a USGA ruler. Then this is something I'm testing out. It measures 46 and a half, end of grip. We've talked about that before, the cap length, end of grip. Notice I've got a round grip on this one versus a rib on the gamer. This is set. I know what my numbers are, I've been hitting balls this morning, and I know where they're at. I've just hit a good one out there, 164 ball speed, which is acceptable given time of day. It's early morning here, it's a bit cooler, it's wet. Also, attack angle, 1.8 positive. I'm gonna to get to all that. I'm gonna talk about all of that and what it means and what you can change because Going to the longer driver doesn't just mean, okay, I'm gonna play my exact same drive ahead, I'm gonna go longer, I'm gonna see where I get to. There's other things you have to investigate before you go there. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about in this video, if this is something you are considering for the off season. Now, why would you consider this? Because if you play longer, hopefully you can see more ball speed gains. Ball speed gains are what equates to yardage, providing you can dial in the launch and the spin and the consistency of the strike. The other area that this is gonna have a big knock-on effect too is your golf bag. I carry a forward, a strong forward, weak three wood, strong forward, and I carry four wedges. If I'm gonna go there and play this driver, it's gonna make the gap larger between fairway wood and driver. It's gonna make room for me to put something else in, which is why this is a winter project. It's also gonna mean I might have to consider one less wedge. So when you look at this, it's not just about finding the extra yardage, go with it, boom. It's where's that gonna impact you as a player. And for me, it's definitely gonna change set makeup if I go with this, if it's not a straight. Now a range session like this, which is where you're likely to test out your drivers when you're going to purchase, is great. You pick your target. For me, it's nice and quiet here so you're not disrupted. You pick your target. I'm going at the street lamp. You guys who watch this regularly know the drill by now. But how is this club gonna impact me on a golf course? And that's where if you put it in, it's one step finding out numbers here, but it's also can you play it? And again, that might impact what you do, whether we go for a stronger three wood, maybe even a tailor-made mini driver, which is something I've not really played around with, but I think it would make a great video, but I only wanna go there if this works. So as we look at setup, for those of you who followed, I still play the Acura TZ6 M5. So the 65 gram version in the strongest one they make. I also play the lie angle quite flat, so in standard, and it suits me how I like it. Now for this test club, I've gone for the TZ6, but I've found they do a counterbalance. What does that mean? Why is it important when it comes to building a longer driver? Counterbalance means, if you remember swing weight, which we've talked about, which is 14 inches from the fulcrum point, it's a letter, then it's a number and it's a balance point. It's critical for golf clubs, but counterbalance means there's more mass between fingers and butt end of the golf clubs. So there's more weight here, which then allows me to put more weight here. For those of you who listened in physics, simple physics, more mass equals more speed. More weight is gonna give you more speed. And this whole test is about speed. So I was able to get swing weight, even though this is 46 and a quarter, it's swing weight's about D6. So the balance with all that weight is D6. So it's not freakishly heavy, freakish, freakishly weighing me down head weight versus the rest of the set that I play around D3, whereas the gamer is about D4. So balance is gonna be where it needs to be. The next thing to consider 
if you're gonna build this, if you're considering doing this experiment, I've tipped it pretty much. I like to tip them quite a bit. You can see when you line the graphics up, uh, providing they're the same, I actually tip this almost to length. So I took about an inch and a half off the tip section. So when you prep a golf club, you butt cut and you tip cut. But this raw blank golf shaft, I only tip cut to length because I wanted to stable up the tip section to stabilize that section when I play it. Now the other huge call out, which I now wanna to get to when we test, which is why I called out attack angle, I've gone down to eight degrees. And the reason for that, I game about nine and a half, nine and a quarter, ball flight out there was great. But the reason for going stronger in the blade is because I'm hoping to get even shallower. And if I get even shallower, that then dynamically will return a different loft to impact, which in turn will create more launch. If I've got the same loft, it will backspin more. If I can capitalize on that and I can get the spin down, that is also by optimizing launch conditions where you'll see yardage gains. So let's start by hitting a few with the gamer. I'll put the Trackman numbers on. Like I say, go easy on me, it's early in the morning, but I'm looking to gain speed. If I can gain speed, then you can gain yardage. I'll call out some of the shots as I hit them, but let's see what this can do versus the longer one with the head weight gonna weigh more, shaft tipped up, how I like it. It's a good experiment. Let's see if I actually need to test some other clubs and get deeper into the golf bag. Start off just with a smooth one. Slight pull, always like the slight pull, attack angle 2.8. Now I say I like the slight pull, I like it for yardage gains. 164 ball speed, just on a normal one, so that's acceptable. Spin rate 26, that's maybe a hair high, but it's a good starter. Let's see if I can step up the pace on one. Got under it. I imagine it's shallow, yeah, 3.2 attack angle. 3.2 attack angle is good. Caught a hair low in the blade, 3,100. 164 ball speed. So we're living around 164 at the moment. Ball forward, let's step on one. One ten club speed. 3.8 attack angle. 163, okay. So the ball speed's living around 164. Let's switch in the longer one. Note, all of those were in play. So we've gone longer, change the setup. Ball position forward, never hit this golf shaft before. Let's just go easy on it to start. Little fade, maybe a bit steep. 163, no gains. Okay, wasn't the best strike though, so that's a good start. Let's step on the strike. 2900 spin, it's high. So you can keep it in play, they were both low out the blade. 163, okay. See if we can shallow one out, capitalize on that. Lower loft. Club speed up one. Getting used to the club now. Higher T, 165. Gone higher T peg, 2700. I really want to tap into less spin than that. See if I can get one at 2000. Much further carry down the range, 112 club speed. 165, still not my best strike, 2,000 spin. See if we can turn one over. See if there's a 170 in there. Body's moving now, that's better. Low in the blade, 113 club speed. Ball speed will still be low because it wasn't hit, 165. 3,000 spin. Big turn. 
much closer to the middle of the blade there. One thirteen club speed. One six seven. So we're creeping up. I think the positive so far is everything's hit the fairway. One to the right, nothing left. Let's turn one. Leaky. I think there's room here to reduce loft. Everything a hair out the bottom of the club, but we've gained about three mile an hour so far. Let's take a degree of loft off on the loft sleeve, hence why you test with the round grip. You'll also notice in there, another thing I did, I've changed tee heights. Gone for a longer tee peg to really help me get that launch. All the attack angles have been pretty good. Okay, so there's less loft again here. Aim a little left, because the face goes open. I really think we can get 170 out of this. Big bounce forward that. 166, 2200 spin, 306 total. Flight there. One thirteen speed. One six seven. One fourteen speed. One six eight point eight. So you can see as the confidence grows, as the club delivery grows, it's definitely worth testing. We've gone now from 163 average all the way up to 168, 168.8. So you're gaining speed. I've also noticed that my path here is down and across slightly. So I'm actually trying to adjust the path according to what is required. If you can get a more neutral path, which again, I actually think the long driver helps with. If I play a short club, I tend to get a little bit steep on it. If I play the longer one, I actually can move it, drop the right foot back. Again, it all helps me for yardage. Fill the gap, fill this space here. Okay, still hunting out, 168.8, quickest one yet. Now we're cooking, that's turned over. 114.3 club speed, 169.6, body starting to move better, attack angle 3.6. One bounce into the fence down there, 169.8. Okay, last ball, see if we can get it. And then let's switch back to the other one and see if these gains are real. One bounce fence again, 169.4. So consistently five mile an hour quicker. Consistently, that's a lot. That'll give you five mile an hour. Each mile an hour is about two, three yards. So that's a lot of speed. Right, back into the short one. Always important you mix it up when you do your practicing like this. Back into the short one. And I always find that it's amazing when you jump between the two. Even if you use it as a practice club, it's amazing how much better your delivery comes. But that was hit really good, but it's still only 163 ball speed. So you're gaining from my testing, providing I watch how the club is delivered. Obviously I've taken the loft down, but you're gaining five mile an hour. I mean, that's something I don't want to leave on the table for sure. Came out nice and flat there. 
and this is where you get to with it 115.7 168.7 so the club speed has improved massively 2100 spin 312 on the total but it makes you want to hit i think you can tell that from me hitting balls here i just want to hit want to hit This might be a little low on the spin for me. It's just a bit knuckly. 170.1, there's what I wanted. You could tell I was hunting that down. 170.1. See if I need to add a bit more spin though. 2400, look knuckly. Okay, draw one. Lovely there. Nice flight. And you could tell if you don't have a track man, Always watch the first bounce. That was bang and forward, bang and forward. So this is averaging 168.8. 169 has been where the average has lived. And I think, I think as a first test of this golf club, it's got a little bit of right in it for sure, although I don't hate that. But I mean, on a range, it passes the eyeball test. We hit 170 early morning with a swing that we showed up with. More importantly, I gained about five mile an hour on the average, switching between the two. Out of the six or seven golf balls, I've hit more than that, haven't I? 12 golf balls. There's a couple that definitely have lost to the right. I've only turned two over. I'd want to look at that. But I mean, it certainly gives me an area where I'm intrigued, where I have to look at other golf clubs in the bag. And it's something I think this off season, I need to do more of. I don't know if this is something I can just dive in and play, but I definitely need to try it out more in practice rounds. Shaft feels great. That tipping up really has made it stable. And obviously, like I say, if you can play less loft, you can get more speed because the dynamic loft is gonna be less when it strikes the impact point, therefore get the yardage. And don't overrule, don't overlook the raised tee peg. If you can get that tee nice and high, you're then gonna offset CG of the golf ball below the CG of the driver head, which will give you those high launch optimum numbers. All what you need to understand as you approach your next fitting, if this is a conversation piece for you to consider this winter. Try it out. Golf clubs are all about pushing the limits. Deep down, I'd love to be a traditionalist, but there's so much going on now on the Pro Tour. When you look at it, you have to consider these things for your own game, just to at least try them out. Do the same, I press you to look at it this winter. If you wanna get better, your clubs can help you, and length of driver shaft and going for a long driver can be somewhere and something you should consider. If you like what you're seeing, subscribe, follow. I do put videos up usually once a week, albeit it's slowed down recently, but I do put videos up here all about helping you make the right equipment choices. Until next Tour Truck Tuesday, go test, let me know how you can.